Okay, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show everything you hopefully need to know for the bouncing ball assignment in After Effects here. So I have this kind of broken down into three steps here. And first, I'm going to show what I think is probably the most difficult part right here, which is to kind of get the, the motion paths and the timing and the spacing worked out here in After Effects. And so we're going to go over that step first right here. And so I'll just play that back to get a basic bouncing ball animation right there. And so that's going to be the hardest part. Step two, I'm going to show how to start adding some squash and stretch to this here. So let's unhighlight it here. And I'm going to kind of start to add some squash and stretch, just if you want the ball to kind of seem less like a bowling ball and a little more elastic right here. And then step three, I'm going to show how to I have kind of attached my own image onto what was a shape layer for the, the circle. And then I'm adding motion blur and rotation into it in the end right here. So that's a little cartoonish, you know, that's kind of what I'm going for in this one. So we're going to go through it in those steps right there. So one reason that we're doing this assignment right here is the bouncing ball animation on top of the pendulum animation, a few others are core to kind of understanding some really important principles in animation here. And if we were to open up the animation survivals kit right here, um, this is going to be one of the first things that you find. You can see right here, um, we have some good examples right here of so the spacing is the difference from one frame to the next so think about this one frame at a time how the spacing happens here so the further the ball is away the faster it seems to be traveling traveling and then the closer together it is the slower it's traveling so you can see in the um this bouncing ball animation right here is going fast then slows down speeds back up then slows down speeds back up and then slows down up there. You can also see an example right here and you don't have to follow this um, uh, exactly, but this is just kind of an example here is the timing might change because the first bounce is having to travel further and the ball has kind of has all of its kinetic energy or, you know, I'm not a physics major, but you know, just all the energy of the ball drop is kind of happening right here at the beginning. So this will take 20 frames right here because it's traveling further and then it's going to travel less and less each time. And it'll get a little bit faster and a little bit faster each time. And depending on how you do the spacing and timing as well as the squash and stretch here will determine greatly if your ball feels like a bowling ball or if it feels like a rubber ball, that kind of thing here. And so you can see right here, this takes 20 frames, 10 frames, 13 frames, and then 10 frames right here um, for this example right here. And um, I'll kind of give you, I, I don't do this exact timing for the animations you saw up there, but um, it'll, it's kind of a similar idea where we have, we kind of, it gets quicker and quicker as the arc gets smaller and smaller right there. Let's get started with this here. So to start things off, first thing I'll do is make a new composition. So I'll go composition, new composition right here. And I'll call this online demo. And this is a 1920 by 1080, so normal HD. 24 frames per second is what I prefer, especially for a project like this. And we're going to keep this really short. So this is going to be 2 seconds and 20 frames right here. It's going to be the duration. So we're going to start off with that right there. And we're going to use shape layers and null objects to kind of get this thing started off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And then I'm going to make a shape layer for the floor. And then I'm just going to go ahead and lock that. So I'm going to go Layer, New, and then Shape Layer right here. And when you're creating a shape layer, you can use the pen tool if you want it to look like you know custom shapes like mountains, things like that. We can. Um, use this menu over here to create a rectangle. But for this, I'm just going to click right here, make a rectangle, and I'm just going to draw it in right there. And so that'll be our floor layer right there. And I'm just going to click on it, press return, and call this floor to rename it. So return is the shortcut. Or you can just right click and find rename right there if you want to rename something. And then to lock it, I'm just going to press this lock button right there. So now I won't select it by mistake or move it around. 
So next up, I'm going to make a ball or a sphere here that I can work with. And so there's a few ways we can go about this. I can um, click, oops, I can click on that and then go down to the lips tool and draw it in manually like this. And if you hold shift, it'll lock it in as a sphere right here. And you can see the anchor point is out here. Oops. Um, I just press V and it kind of clicked on and off of it again. And the anchor point's right there. To move the anchor point, you can press Y on your keyboard. Y is in yes. And you can move it around right here. And if snapping is not turned on up here, it's not going to snap automatically. But if you hold Command right there, so I'm holding Command on my keyboard, and I'm, and I'm, I'm on a Mac right here, it'll snap right to the middle right there. And I actually, for this, I want it to snap to the bottom. So I'm going to hold Command and drag it down to the bottom right there. One thing too, is if you have snapping turned on, I believe the command shortcut might not work anymore. So I'm holding command right now with those turned on and it's kind of not working, but it kind of does it for me when these two buttons are engaged. So um, just keep that in mind right there. So now the anchor point is snapped to the bottom right there. And that'll be helpful because when I rotate, it'll kind of go around that point if I scale it up and down it'll come from that point right there. So that's kind of why we're doing that right there. So I have the ball and I'm going to rename this ball shape right there. And then next up is I'm going to use a null to animate this. And the reason I'm going to use a null is it, it's going to be helpful here. So we're basically going to step one, we're going to animate using the null right here. And then step two, we're going to, I'm going to add squash and stretch um right here and i'm going to have that animation on the ball right there and um let's see here and additionally we're going to in step three we'll do a rotation and just having it separated out i find to be helpful right here so i'm going to make a null and for anyone who's unfamiliar a null object is um up here is layer new null object right there it'll appear as a red box and a null object is something that you can parent objects to and or you can parent it to objects. And you see it in your preview right here, and you can animate it and move it around, but it is not going to show up in your render at the end of things here. So I'm just going to put this towards the bottom right here. Let's turn on snapping and see if that helps. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the, um, the parent uh, pick whip here and I'm going to attach the ball to the null. So I, I took the null and made sure it's positioned on the bottom. I have the anchor point of the ball on the bottom right there. So things are ready to go. So I'm going to parent the ball to the null just by clicking on the spiral and then dragging it onto the null like this. You can also click it in this menu right there. And so now when I click on the null and move it around, it's going to move the ball around right here. Um, and so here, you probably heard me mention this at the beginning of this tutorial, that this is going to be a little bit different than if you're animating frame by frame right here. Because when you're animating frame by frame, whether you're doing straight ahead or you're doing keyframes, is you'll draw a ball here, then you'll draw a bit, ball there, 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 and kind of move it both up and down and left to right. In After Effects, because of the way it works, it's going to make it a lot easier for us if we animate the up and down first and then we do the left to right. And in order to do that, we're going to have to um, separate the um, uh, position here in, in just a moment here. And so that's where it's going to be a little bit different. So when we first animate this, it's going to be, instead of a ball going from left to right, it's going to be as if you're just dropping the ball straight down onto the ground right here. And then we'll kind of add that left to right later. This is a super important step right here. So do not forget this step right here, which is I'm going to select the null right here, and I'm going to right click on position right there. And I'm going to go down to separate dimensions right there. So you can see right now that X and Y are showing up right there. And I need to right click and then separate dimensions right there. And you see what happened? Instead of it being an X, Y all in one layer, X position, Y position got separated out. And this is super important because we're going to focus on the timing first. And we're going to kind of animate it as if it's just falling straight up from the air. 
And then we'll kind of add that left to right movement later. And it's going to make your lives so much easier on this process right here. Um, so you can see I have my timing right here pulled up. And so this is just kind of the timing of the demos that we saw before. And we might shift this around here as we look at this, but this is going to be my starting point if you want to kind of follow along with what I'm doing, or you can kind of choose your own timing here. So um, just remember, I'm just going to press edit undo right here. It's going to look like this at first, and you really, really need to um, click on position under the null, right click, separate dimensions right there. And when we click on the null, I'll hold shift and move it up right there. You can see the Y position is the one that we're going to animate. So Y is up and down, and then X is left to right. So we're going to animate the Y position right here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the 12th keyframe right here, because that's kind of where my first landing spot is. We'll worry about the zero keyframe later. And I'm just going to zoom in on this and make sure that this is in position. It's pretty good right now. But if you are if you want to get it exact, you can use the arrow keys right here just to move it up and down. And you can see no keyframes are generated yet. And so to create my first keyframe, I'm just going to click the little stopwatch next to Y position right there. Notice no keyframe was added on X position right there. And we're just focusing on timing. So I'm actually not even going to move this ball at all. I'm just going to go to frame 26 right here. So go into frame 26. And then, so when you're making new keyframes, you usually have two options. You can, for the second keyframe right here, I can move the, oops, um, I can move the object right there. And then I'll animate from point A to point B. And I'll delete that and go back to frame 26. But the option, if you want to create a timing keyframe but not move the object, is this little diamond button right there. So that adds or removes the, a keyframe right there. So I'm just going to click on that. And we're not moving the ball here. We're just only thinking about timing of the positions where the ball hits the ground is what we're doing. The high up moments, well, I'll, I'll show you that here in a moment. So this will become, this might be a little mysterious right now, but it's going to become clear here in just a minute. So um, we are at frame 26 right there. So now we're going to go to 38 right here. Same diamond button. I'm just going to be doing this button a, a bunch of times right here. So right there. So we're at 38. Now to 48. We're just finding the timing of the landing points right here. And I might shift this down the road, but this is just kind of what, what I'm going to start with. So we're at 55. And then I'm going to do 62 right here. So nothing's animating right now. I just kind of put the, the ball on, on its um, landing position and then found some timing. And now I'm going to go back to that zero keyframe right there. And I'm at, this time I'm going to move it. So instead of pressing this little diamond button for the first keyframe at zero, I'm going to, oops, would help if I went to the zero keyframe. I'm going to hold shift and drag it up. I guess I probably don't need to hold shift because the positions are separated, but that's okay. So now when you animate this, it should look like this. It should have keyframes along these positions um, that I've numbered right there, or you can kind of choose your own timing. And Notice how it's starting far apart and getting close together right there. And then the animation right now should just look like that, where it's just it's coming down linearly with no ease in or ease out. And it's just, you know, very computerized right now. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to animate this as if, again, it's like a ball that we're just dropping straight onto the ground without any um, horizontal velocity. So. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, I didn't do my seventh keyframe here. I must have forgotten or deleted it by mistake. Okay, so, and again, I just went to that point and then pressed that button right there. So again, the animation should just look like that. Okay, so let's start animating this thing. So remember with the bouncing ball, we got the, the points where it hits the ground. And so those are the keyframes we just generated, but we need these high points up here. So that's what we're going to work out now. And we're going to use the graph editor to create those. So, um, and again, I guess the big difference now is this is a ball going left to right, and we're just starting off with a ball just falling straight down. So um, to work on this, I'm going to click on any keyframe right here, and I'm going to press this button right here. It's called the graph editor. 
And the graph editor should look like this. I'm going to move my zoom thing out of the way. And so what you need to do is you need to select all these keyframes right here. So I'm just dragging and selecting up there. And then I'm going to, it doesn't matter which keyframe you choose, but I'm just going to um, right click on this keyframe right here. Oh no, it's not right click. It is option click, sorry. So I'm going to hold option and then click on my keyframe right here. And you can see it generates Bezier's right here. And we're going to use these Bezier handles to create the high points right here in the animation. So right now it's going down, it's going to wobble a little bit and then come to a point. And so right here, um, norm normally Bezier handles, you just grab one end and it moves the other right here. And that's not going to work for a bouncing ball animation. We need to break the handles. And so to do that, you'll um, likely, and it kind of depends on the computer a little bit, but you should need to press option on your keyboard on a Bezier handle and then move it right there. And so now once I broke that handle, I don't need to press option for the second one and I can move it that way. If, so let's, let me just show that again. So normally when you just grab the handle, it moves like that. If I hold option, it breaks the handle, which is what we want. And then I do not need to press option again for this one right here. If I press option for this second one, it'll, it moves it, it reverts it back to its initial state where it's, um, they both move together right there. So um, just to show that again, I'm going to press option, snap that, drag it down. Don't need to hold option for the second one. Pull that one in like that. And I'm going to manually just kind of draw these in. So um, again, I'm onto this new keyframe right here. So similar thing, I'm going to hold option. Uh, let's see here. So I, I'm going to move that keyframe. Then I'm going to hold option, break this handle right here and move this. And for this first pass, I'm actually, I'm not going to get this animation perfect. I'm just using my trackpad, by the way, to scroll left to right. You can also grab this handle right here. Um, I'm not going to get these Bezier's perfect yet. I'm just going to kind of concentrate on breaking the handles and getting this thing into a rough, a very rough position right here. So, and looking at this right here, so again, I've, I've just been using option to kind of break the handles and start working with it that way. Um, at any point, if you want to zoom out and see your whole animation, you can press this button right here. If you want to zoom in on one kind of area, you can press that button right here. So that fits selection to view. So zoom out. You can also select two, and I believe it should yeah highlight the two right there when I press this fit to selection to view. I'll zoom back out again. Um, one thing that's really important um, that I might not have mentioned is if your graph editor, your graph editor should look exactly like this, where there's this green line and it's behaving this way where we're not having the exposition kind of come in and intrude on our graph editor here. Um, there's a chance that you have the speed graph selected, in which case it's going to look like this, which will look crazy. So make sure that you are in the edit value graph button right here. So again, it's this little button right here. Choose the graph type and make sure you're in edit value graph right there. And again, I was just holding option and kind of breaking these handles. Now that all of the handles are kind of broken right here, I can start kind of really fine tuning my animation if I want. Let me do it one more time right here. So for the first keyframe um, is I'm going to hold option, click that, and it creates the handle. And now I can just drag it out like that. So let's see what we have right here. This is going to be a little rough, but let's just see the animation. So, OK, so that's kind of what the animation looks like right now. And so what I want to do now is just kind of fine tune this a little bit. It's, it's actually kind of close right here. So I'm thinking about the timing of the first ball right here. So when uh, remember, think, think about it this way is when the ball, sorry, when the, the graph is going more left to right, it is going to be going slower. And then when it's going more up and down, it's going to be going faster with this graph. So it's starting slow, it's fading way up, still moving real fast right here. Then we kind of reach the, the top of the, the mountain right here for the ball. It's going to get, it's going to be slow up here. And that mountain's going to start off high and it's going to be less, 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 less as we kind of move down. So 
now it's just time to kind of adjust these beziers to be um, a little more precise. And so right here, take note, let's do an AB here. So I'm going to make this first bounce really big right here. So look at this. OK. And now I'm going to make the first bounce really small. Oops. Right here by doing it this way. Right. So depending on what kind of ball you want this to be, like if you have a bowling ball, you're going to want all these arcs right here to be really small. If you're doing a tennis ball, you're going to want these to be a lot bigger. And we're going to kind of even these out a little bit. So I'm going to have my second ounce be a little bit bigger. And I kind of like these handles to be kind of symmetrical here. You see how these handles on these bounce are kind of symmetrical? And I'm kind of sculpting the motion path as well by doing this. So again, I'm just clicking on each handle and trying to even them out a little bit here. And again, I'm kind of making this a bouncier ball. I think those are way more fun to animate, but it just kind of depends on your goals and all that. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so that's kind of that's kind of working right there. And so right now we have the ball just going up and down. And next we're gonna have this ball going left to right. And so this is the big reason we separated the, the keyframe positions right there. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, under the position keyframe, I'm just gonna click on it and then look at the number that's to the right of it. I'm gonna click on that and then drag my cursor to the left. And that's just gonna move it over. This way I can also just type in a number, a small number down here um, as well. And, so I have it just a little bit off frame right there. So just drag that. I'm gonna create my first keyframe right there. There's only gonna be two keyframes total in this. So first keyframe at zero, and I'm gonna go all the way to the very end of my animation right here. And then I'm just gonna drag it to the right. And look at that, it's generating my left to right animation for me right here. That's the, the animation right now. And think about it this way. So for this first bounce, the ball has a lot of energy in it still, but as it gets further along, it's gonna slow down as it gets less energy. So I'm gonna ease in to this keyframe right here. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna select this keyframe that's under the X position right there. I'm gonna click on the graph editor right here. And I'm just gonna click this button right here. This is the easy is ease in button right here. And so that's just another way I can generate the Bezier handle. I could also do what we've been doing before where I hold option and click on that keyframe right there. It does basically the same thing. And I'm just gonna click it and drag it like this. And remember, the more flat this line is, the slower the ball is going. So it's gonna be going slow right here. And then it's gonna be going fast right here because there's more vertical movement in the line. So let's see what this looks like. So it's pretty exaggerated right now. So I'm gonna take this handle and may maybe make that a little more subtle right here. And I just press the easy ease and button just to make my life a little easier there. Okay. So right here, we have the main animation right here. And to adjust, these arcs right here. Um, let me just kind of sidetrack just for a moment here. And I'm going to make a new shape layer just to kind of show you something. So I'm going to make a new shape layer and it's just going to be a star. So don't do it. You don't need to follow along with this. This is just to show you something here. So I have the star and I'm just going to duplicate it. Okay. So Normally, when you animate something, so I have my star up here. I created, a, I generated a keyframe right here by pressing the stopwatch, and I'm going to just move it, and I'm not going to separate its dimensions. So it just moves left to right like that. I can normally change the the path of the animation through these Bezier handles that are on the preview screen right here. 
Do you see that right there? And since we've separated the dimensions, sorry, the position right here. So let me just hit undo that and kind of do what we did where we separate the dimensions right here. And I create keyframes and then I'm going to move it. And right here, I'm not going to have access to those Bezier handles right here. So that's kind of one thing that changes when with a separate di um, dimensions option right here is the Bezier handles kind of go away on the screen, but we can still adjust that. And it's just basically you have to kind of think about it within the graph editor right here. So if I want to change the Bezier handles, um, or sorry, the way that this arc is kind of shaped right here, it all happens in the graph editor right here since we've separated the dimensions. Hopefully that's clear. Um, I know that it's kind of an abstract thing I'm explaining right there, but it's just kind of something within the software. So if I want to change the arcs that are happening right here, I mainly, like I can change the position up here, like I can actually move it right here in turn, but that's one of these keyframes right here. And if I take it and I, let's say I, I take my position and notice how I'm in between two of my keyframes right here. And I want the arc to be different, this movement arc, and I move it like this. It's going to create two keyframes right there. And I'm not going to have any handle to control it on screen right here. So you don't want to do that. You, you basically want to um, make sure that you're doing as much as you can in the graph editor right here. There should be very few keyframes right here, just only the moments where it's hitting the ground. And when it's up in the air, you don't want any keyframes right there. If you want to adjust the arc right here, because of the method in which we're working right here, you'll just need to click on position right here, click on the graph editor and change it here. And notice that if I change my arc down here, it, it visually corresponds up here in the graph. So um, only have keyframes for the points where it hits the ground and then the first keyframe where it's way up in the air. And if you wanna change your visual arc, your animation arc right here, just kind of make that change through the Bezier handles on the Y position right here, as well as, I guess, the X position. So if you just want to fine tune the arc, it's kind of like this. That's how you fine tune that. So I'm not going to go too crazy with that, but I just want to make sure that everyone kind of understands how that works right here. And again, if you want the arc to look different in terms of its spacing left to right, that'll be the X position right here, where I'm just going to click on X position, where it says that right here, press the graph editor. And notice that when I change this Bezier handle of this keyframe right here, notice that we only have one, two keyframes in this, that the further I squish it that way, you see the arcs change right there. The further I drag it this way, the more the arcs change right there. So again, just be sure to do this animation with just two keyframes on the X position, and then the number of keyframes where it hits the ground on the Y position right here. And you'll end up with something that looks like that. Okay, so that's step one. That's the hard step right there. So um, let me save this right here. And so now we're gonna move to step two. And so step two, if we look at this, we have some squash and stretch and I'm trying to kind of have it be a little elastic in the way that it looks here. And so basically the way that I am going to do this is I'm going to, I'm trying to think of which order would be best. I think I'm going to animate the rotation first, which is going to use a very similar process as to what we were doing for step one. And then the squash and stretch, which is where we scale it. So it's going, the ball is going to be really thin and stretchy when it's moving quickly. And then it'll compress when it hits the ground. It'll stretch when it's going fast again. And then when it starts to slow down, it'll turn more into a sphere right there. And that's a core idea of animation that's going to that's going to be a step where we're going to have more keyframes going on so hopefully this will be clear as i do this so the main animation the step one animation is all happening on the null so for the step two animation i'm going to unlock my ball layer here i'll lock my null and i'll start animating actually i'm not going to lock my null let's see here and i'm going to start animating using and i'm going to animate on the ball shape right here one helpful shortcut, by the way, is you can expand and collapse layers just by clicking this. But if you want to only see 
the aspects that are animated, if you select a layer and you press U, you see it, it expands it, but it doesn't expand it all the way. So it's taking up my whole window. It, when you press U, it just kind of shows you the, the keyframes that are there. So what I need to do is I need to animate rotation now. So I'm going to click on the ball. I'm going to click on where it says rotation right here. And I'm just going to go to each keyframe right here. And it's going to be the same thing where it's just at zero. And I'm just going to go to each keyframe and I'm going to press this button right here to add or remove keyframe to each one. So keyframe two. Um, one helpful shortcut is you can hold shift and it'll snap right here. So I'm just holding shift and snapping at each time to make sure it goes to the corresponding keyframe right here. And so now, and let me do one for the beginning keyframe out here. And so basically the reason that I'm rotating this, if we look at step two, is the ball needs to rotate a little bit so that when it's stretching, it's kind of going along with its path right here. So it needs to rotate a little bit, square up, and then need to kind of rotate out to kind of match that path. And so this isn't actually going to be the ball spinning. This is going to be to entirely to serve towards um, creating the squash and stretch. So I have um, these keyframes here. I'm going to, so I'm on the ball, I'm under rotation right here, and I'm going to click on the graph editor right here. And essentially, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is I'm going to select all the keyframes. Then I'm going to press Option on my keyboard and click. And now I'm going to get those same Bezier handles I got before. And so here, what I want to do is, so when you first drag it, it's going to appear like it's not doing anything. And if you look at these numbers here, so the max I've rotated it is 0.5 or 0.3, right? Right there. And so I'm going to press the um, tilde button, which is the button that's directly to the left of number one on my keyboard, just to make this full view. And I'm just going to drag that until it just keeps going down right here. And let me press option on that. And again, you just drag it. I wish this worked a little bit differently, but I'm just kind of dragging it multiple times just to kind of get the graph expanded out to where it needs to be right here. And so essentially, I want this to go to about 20 right here, right there. And so this is going to rotate the ball at negative 20 right there. And notice I just had to kind of manually drag it down a few times to get it down that far, because again, at first, the graph editor is going to want to be a much tighter end. And so right there, you see it's rotating in. And now I'm going to have it rotate out. So this is basically, I'm going to click and drag it. And we're basically making this motion right here. It's like a wave. So this is a little bit different than our first one right here, where I'm making like an S curve with each of these. So I'm, for these other ones, I'm not even really breaking the keyframe. And I'm just dragging it out like that. So let me undo and just kind of show this one more time in case anyone's struggling. So for that first keyframe, I had to kind of pull it down like this to kind of get the, the number where I wanted it. Now I'm just going to not, I'm not clicking option and I'm just clicking that Bezier and dragging it up. And again, um, so this is the part that'll start repeating right here is I'm going to click this handle, drag it down like that. And then the right handle might shape it a little bit like that. And then I'll do the same thing for all these other ones. So I'm going to click this one down, drag it up, click this one down, drag it up, click this one down. And so now this won't be perfect yet. And again, we're thinking about squash and stretch right here. And so remember, just keep in mind here that we're looking at the null and we're trying to have the anchor point kind of match this motion path so that when we do the squash and stretch, it'll kind of squash and stretch in the correct direction here as we're going. So let's start. So that's the rotation right there. 
And hopefully if there's any mystery to what I'm doing, it'll become clear here in just a second when I start to animate the scale. So to animate the scale, when you rescale things, if I click and drag, it scales uni universally right there, or uniformly, I should say. So 193, 193. If you click the chain link, you see I can squash it and stretch it right there. So um, first step, I would click the chain link right there. And so now we're going to start keyframing this. And this is going to be a little bit more like traditional keyframing, where we're just going to kind of have to think it through and go through this process um, frame by frame, a little, or not frame by frame, but step by step. So this ball is going really quick right here. So it's going to be really stretched out. And as it, it's going to be at its maximum velocity, the frame before it impacts the ground. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin it out a little bit, stretch it out a little bit. And I'll probably need to kind of go back and adjust my rotation keyframes after this a little bit. So it's stretching out a lot. I'm going to actually, I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit just so people can kind of see what I'm doing. So it's going to be 135. I'll do 75 for this. Um, and I'm going to create my first scale keyframe right there. And so this is the key before the first impact. Then the ball is going to impact right here. I'm basically going to do the opposite. I'll do 125. So I'm stretching it out then collapsing it vertically. So now it's going to be at, let's do 120.80 right here. And so it's stretching, squashing, and let me get a little more out of that. So I'll do 140 and then 60. You can try to be mathematical with this and try to keep the amount of volume consistent. And so it's going to squash right here, and then it's going to immediately start going fast again. So we're going to kind of revert back to this other keyframe. I can just select it, press Command C or Edit Copy up here, or I can and then I can press Edit, sorry, Command V or Edit Paste right here and paste that keyframe right there if you want to kind of reuse some keyframes. But remember, this thing's going to be losing a little bit of velocity each time it impacts. So maybe this time. I do um, 85 and then 120 right here, or let's do 120, 125. Okay. And then I'm going to, so that's right around there. So remember this keyframe right here is the moment of impact. So one frame before moment of impact, and then it's one, basically two keyframes after. And I'm going to find the moment where it's the highest up in the air right here, the ball. And so here under scale, under the ball shape, I'm going to bring it back to its initial scale, which is 100 and 100 right here, right there. And then I'm going to go back to, it's going to be speeding up. And so as it speeds up, remember it's going its fastest right before it impacts right there. Um, and so we're going to make it thinner by dragging that number down a little bit. Let's do 85 and I'll stretch it out by dragging that number right there. And then when it impacts, it's going to squish. So this number is basically going to flop right here. And then I can copy and paste this frame just to give myself a starting point. And I might bring it up two or three frames beyond. And um, it's getting a little less and a little less each time. So maybe this time it's going to be 90 and 115. And then I'm going to find the position where it's the furthest up in the air, where it's going the slowest, looking at the arc right here. So remember, again, we're doing all this animation under the scale on the ball shape as well as the rotation, just to make sure that the squashing and stretching kind of moves in the correct direction here. So it's at the slowest point when it's up in the air like that. So I'm going to do 100 and 100 right here. It'll speed up again before the landing spot. And this is going to become, going to become more and more subtle each time. So now we're at like, let's do 95 and 105 or something like that. So it's just barely squashing and stretching now. And I'll flip it on this landing point right here. And notice that I'm moving the playhead to the position where I want the keyframe to be. And then I change the parameters. And that's how I 
generate any of these keyframes right here. Oh, whoops. Oh, yeah. Um, one thing, be really careful that they're not all selected like this. That's um, That was almost made a really big mistake right there. So I had this keyframe selected. I thought it was just this keyframe, but you can see they're all highlighted blue. And when I changed it, it changed all my keyframes to be that same thing. So you do not want that to happen. So let me just go back and fix that. So remember when it's stretching, the second number will be higher. When it's squashing, this number will be higher. And we're getting to a point now where this thing does not need much, if any, squashing and stretching here. So I'm just gonna do one last keyframe where we kind of do this. So I'll do 97 and 103. I'll swap them. And you don't need to swap these exactly like I'm doing. And then here, we're just gonna move it back up to 100 because everyone gets the idea of what I'm doing, hopefully this point. And so I haven't added any ease ins on this yet. <laughs> this is pretty exaggerated and over the top right now. I need to kind of tone this down probably a little bit. Right. And so here um, you might need to kind of come in and clean up these e some ease ins and ease outs right here. And since we weren't able to separate these like we were up here, it's actually going to be a lot harder to deal with with these, but it's um, just something we'll have to wrestle with. So I think that first impact has too much squash on it right there. So let's see here. Yeah, that's too much. 125. fifteen. I'm squashing too much. So I'm just going to each impact point and making the adjustment right there. Let's try this again. And from here, it's just like, you, you kind of need to start kind of making adjustments to things. Um, so maybe for this first keyframe, maybe it should be coming from higher. So I'm going to move my playhead to the um, first keyframe or at zero keyframe. I'm just going to move this up vertically and have this coming from a higher position. And... I want this to be traveling quicker at first a little bit. Oops. Sometimes the computer playback gets a little slow right here. So something that can help is if you just kind of scroll the playhead a little bit right there. So you see, I was able to, I'm changing the animation a lot through small adjustments right here, but these are kind of the number of keyframes that I have right now. So. Again, for the actual main animation right here, it's just um, about seven keyframes at the bottom and then just two keyframes at the top. And then here it's getting a little more keyframey. <laughs> so I have a rotation right here, which is the same amount of keyframes exactly as my impact points. And then I use the graph editor to help kind of draw it in a little bit. And then the scale for the actual squash and stretch itself is where I started to kind of add in a lot of keyframes right here. So let me just look at this one more time. This is not. And I think I want these arcs to be a little less extreme right here. So I'm just going to let this ball lose some of its velocity. Um. But let's see, I want this first keyframe to just be a little bit different. And notice too, these handles, um, the green handles should be kind of outside of the, the loops like there. Come on, computer, there we go. Okay, so um, right here, we're starting to have some, a lot of this animation coming together right here. I probably, I mean, I would go in and fine tune this a bit, quite a bit more, but at least we're getting the idea here. So um, here's a great illustration of why I separated the X and Y position for the initial animation right here is 
for the scale, you're actually not able to do that, unfortunately, in After Effects. And so when I click on the scale, oops, when I click on the scale and go into the graph editor, that's what I'm having to deal with. <laughs> you know, so that's it gets a little cumbersome in here when things are sometimes when things are kind of connected. So I'm just going to work through this as quick as I can. So this is just one keyframe right here. So ease in and ease out. It's not going to make a big difference. This ball is going to bounce back. So it is. I'm going to select this. Um, I guess it's technically the fourth keyframe back here. Or no, it's the third. I'm sorry. But that um, that first keyframe one is kind of stretching back out. I wanted to kind of get back to that stretch position rapidly right here. So we're back to stretch quickly because I eased it in. So remember, it's going quick, and then it slows down at the top right here. And I want this just to be kind of smooth as it's kind of coming up towards the top right here. So I kind of, with this keyframe right here, I made it ease in. With this keyframe right here, I have it kind of ease ease, which is this button right here where it eases in and it eases out. So it's just kind of smooth in both directions. Then right here, this is just one keyframe right here. So we don't need to do any eases at all. I'm just going to repeat that. So this is that first keyframe after the bounce where I'm going to ease it in. And I'll just manually click the Bezier handles just to get that. And so um, it's kind of like X, Y right here, the, the green and the red. We're at the, the height of the ball. So I'll do an ease, ease. Again, it's just one frame right there. So no need to do ease ends there. One more while I'll do an ease, ease. I'm using the my mouse trackpad just to scroll to the right. Ease, ease for this again at the height right here. We're about the impacts, so it's going to be quick. And then I'll just kind of ease into that last one right there. So even though that looks crazy, um, essentially I'm just having a keyframe before it impacts where it's stretching. It stretches, so frame one, frame two right there. Then it quickly stretches back out, and then I use the, the ease in to have it quickly stretch back out. Then to get to the point where I said it's normal 100 by 100 right here, have it ease ease, which is this one right here. And it's going to slowly kind of move back into that maximum velocity, quick impact. Then we repeat the process there. So let's just see what this looks like. Hopefully this looks okay. Right there. And that actually makes a huge difference. Um, hopefully you can kind of see that. You can also use the rewind button in YouTube here to kind of see the difference right here. But as I cleaned up the graph editor right there, this animation started to look a lot better right here, at least to my eye. So this kind of brings us to the end of step two right here. So um, let me save this real quick. So step one, we just kind of got that basic motion in there. Step two, we kind of start to add that squash and stretch into it right here. And then step three, I'm going to take an image and attach it, and then I'll add rotation to it right here. And this is actually going to be by far the easiest step right here. So um, <laughs> fortunately, you know, I'm sure we're overdue for that because I feel like this is a tricky thing we're doing. So um, in After Effects, I like to make folders for things just to keep things organized right here. So I have this little ball character that I made, um, and it's a PNG. So that is transparent in the background. Um, if you're not good with Photoshop, I would just kind of stick with what we have right here. You know, use shape layers, things like that. But this is just kind of just to show you, add on another kind of chapter or technique to this thing. So in Photoshop, I created this um, tennis ball. Let me just drag it into the, my online demo project. So I'm just going to drag it to the top right here. So it looks like this. And since it's a PNG, I have transparency on the background so that you can see that it's transparent on these outer areas right here. So what I want to do is I want this to kind of take the place of this um, sphere, this, this shape layer right here. I think the shape layer does have a really nice aesthetic to it. You know, we have like a really cool like graphic 
look here, you know, if you use like a nice color palette between the background, the, the floor and the ball right here. So there's really no shame in having an animation kind of be this, but I just want to show this technique right here so that we can kind of see it with rotation. So um, I'm bringing my playhead to a keyframe where my scale is at 100% right here, which happens to be this one where it's up in the air. I'm going to select my ball character, move them up there. Um, you can press T as a shortcut to get here. I can go under transform and go for opacity right here. I'm just going to take the opacity down to like 42 or around there. That doesn't need to be exact. And then I'm just going to take the scale slider and I'm going to scale my little character so that they're the same size as the ball right here. And you can use the arrow keys as well to reposition this a little bit. And it honestly doesn't have to be totally exact here. And I'm going to take the opacity, bring it up. Just continue to use the arrow key. OK, so that's good enough. So now I'm going to take the opacity up to 100. So I just have the ball character, and I just place it on top of the ball that we initially had. And I'm just going to parent it to our ball shape right here. So to parent it, remember, this is going to be the same thing we did with the null before, where I click on the ball character, the pick whip drag it down, and I could attach it. OK, so this is attached. So the the rotation's a little funny right here, as you can see, because of the squash and stretch. But something I can do is I'm going to take things to my first keyframe, so keyframe 0, or sorry, to frame 0, not keyframe 0. And I'm going to click a, the stopwatch on my ball character on rotation to create a keyframe there. Then I'm going to go to the end of my animation, and then I'm just going to rotate them around a bit. So I just clicked on this and then dragged to the right, and you can see I'm rotating the character right here. So when I do that, let's see if I can get the computer playback to work. I might need some more rotation here. OK, so um, what I did here is I, on keyframe 0, or sorry, on frame 0, I had it just as it came in. Then I went over here to the end of the animation and then rotated it. Let's rotate it by 3. You can see it's 360 degrees and then 3 times. So that means it's rotated 3 times. And right here, you'll note that as a ball comes to a stop, it's going to slow down as it rolls at the end. It's kind of spinning too much at the end right there. Um, and also, I need to hide that ball. You can see the ball, the orange ball that we used initially, peeking out from behind. So one thing I can do is I can just turn off the visibility of that ball, and the animation's still going to be there, because this is parented to its movement, but it's not parented to its visibility. So that'll kind of take care of that first problem. And then the second problem where it's spinning too much back here is I'm just going to ease into this frame, and it's going to fix that problem. So to do that, I'm going to select this keyframe right here. So we're on the ball character under rotation, selecting that keyframe, going to the graph editor. I'm going to ease into that. And let's see what this looks like. All right, that's pretty fun, I think. You know, so um, since I attached the the character to the ball right here, he's, squa he's squashing, stretching, squashing. And so this is kind of why I have these set up into the ball shape, the null, and the character right here. The main app animation is happening on the null. On the ball character, I'm just totally focused on squash and stretch, nothing else. And then finally, for the rotation of the ball, I have the, the PNG that I brought in right here. And again, for this PNG, they're spinning a lot at first, and then they're kind of slowing down right here as it comes to an end right there. And so one final technique here, I've been going on forever, I feel like, but um, one last technique here is if you want motion blur, usually your animation should stand up and look OK without motion blur. But if you want to add, um, so make sure, so what I'm saying there is make sure that it looks good without motion blur. It's not going to fix a bad animation, but it does add like some nice fluidity to things here. So 
in, or, in order to enable motion blur, you need to do click two buttons. So right here under the timeline, click that button. That's going to enable motion blur for any layer that has motion blur switched on down here. So the only layer down here that's going to need it is our little ball character here. So I'm just going to turn on that right there. And so now when I press play, it's going to be the motion blur is going to be subtle because of the settings I have in my preferences right here. But there's motion blur added. One thing too is if I turn off the character and then I just do the ball shape, it's going to work for that too. So you can see if I just freeze frame right here, you can see there's a little motion blur happening right there. So um, within my, you remember I was saying within my preferences, I have a uh, subtle motion blur, but if we want mo more motion blur, we can fix that. So let's just switch this back to our character here. And so if you want to change the amount of motion blur that's happening within your scene, once you've kind of enabled it here and then enabled it there, is we go to composition, um, composition settings. So composition and then composition settings. This window will come up. Then under advanced, you're looking for shutter angle right here. So basically, the lower the shutter angle, the um, less motion blur there's going to be. So if I want a lot of motion blur, I'm going to make that number really big. Right there. That's clearly way too much. I think After Effects default is 180, which I feel like is still way too much. Um, let's do like 110 or something. And this is still going to be more than my taste, but we'll at least be able to see what it looks like with motion blur here. So. You can kind of see the animation with 110 as the shutter speed for the motion blur. So again, for motion blur, just enable this button right here. Turn it on for whichever layers you want motion blur enabled with these little buttons, these boxes right here. Then to change the amount of motion blur, let me close that. To change the amount of motion blur, you go to composition, composition settings. There's three tabs right here. So go to advanced and then you can kind of mess with these as well um, to really fine tune it right here. But the main one, the most important one is the shutter angle, which again is kind of like the amount that you're going to get right there. So this will be an example where we have it at 80. And there's a bouncing ball animation.